Hello everyone. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Amen. All right, so do not make any religion or Bible your false God. And I'm going to get deep into this. I talked about it a little bit beforehand, but I wanted to get more in detail. Appreciate the beautiful bug sounds that you hear. Hallelujah. <laughs> do not make especially this. I see this very often. I speak to Christians and I speak to uh, I've spoken to some Muslims um, and I've spoken to other people who believe other things, but mostly just Christians and Muslims, especially Christians. And most of them make the mistake of making the Bible and the religion of Christianity their false God. They've gotten so deep into it that they have different sects. And they think that if you don't follow this certain divination or domination or sect, that you're not on the right path to going to heaven and that you're not right with God. And these are people who are talking about the same book, y'all, the same book. And they've divvied it up so much to the point where they think that people who are following the same book but do things slightly different are somehow not following God. Listen, y'all, do not make religion or book your false God. Here's why. First of all, God existed before the Bible and all these religious scriptures. Human beings have been on this planet just from records alone but this is just what we can find that's not even to uh take account of the bones of human beings that might have been just washed away completely all evidence has been completely gone humans have been on this planet at least two hundred thousand years y'all two hundred thousand years there is no hindu hindu there is no religious scripture that has been around for even half that time even half that time. When you take that into consideration, you have to understand that God God existed before any of these things. God existed before the creation of the Bible. God existed before the creation of the Quran. God existed before the creation of all these man-made scriptures about what God is. When you put, take that into consideration, God was there before these books were there. And many of us would be so much in our ego that we somehow think, well, those people from a long time ago didn't know God then. They never connected to God until now. Not only is that very egotistical and completely wrong, <laughs> that is making the Bible your false God. You somehow think that God only exists as it is written in the Bible or the Quran. People have gone so crazy with this that they think their religion based on their book based on a book y'all a book written by a human being based on a book is the only god is the only way to connect to god and anything else is a demon or a false god let me get into this whole false god god thing because christians love to use this especially since i'm a hinduist i uh celebrate or, or follow uh other deities that are uh, gods or other gods as they put it but a lot of, first of all a lot of people do not understand what hinduism is first of all these aren't different gods this is one god in different forms and manifestations okay that's different from what they teach in christianity so it's hard for people to understand they somehow touch on it with the the holy trinity which is ironic because there's a holy trinity in hinduism as well so a lot of these people think that these are false gods based on certain scriptures these scriptures that claim about false gods are not talking about the gods of other religions. The gods or the gods, God of other religions is all the same God. They're all talking about the same person or this not person, the same spirit. They're all talking about the same spirit, the all powerful spirit. But we get so caught up on a name, making a false God. We get so caught up on a book. We get so caught up on this, that, and the other that we somehow think that these are false gods and we try to condemn other religions christians and muslims are the worst when it comes to this they have gotten so skewed in their mind that they literally have missionaries or people who go out and try to strip away people's religions and what they grew up with because they think it's false god because they're trying to be god and they're trying to force their false god onto people a false god is not a different God from another religion. A false God is stuff that even Christians themselves who want to claim the false God thing do themselves. Do themselves. They make money their false God. 
They make a, rel uh, a relationship their false God. They make a religion their false God. They make a book their false God. They make all these material possessions or things that they think they have to achieve their false God. They believe these things have more power in their life than God itself. Many people do this. Even some of the most devout Christians do this themselves. They make this stuff a false God. The human mind wants to have a hierarchy, think they're better than, and condemn others. The human mind is full of ego and is flawed. The human mind is what created religion. The human mind even changed some of the scriptures. I believe without a doubt in my heart that some of the religion, as someone who's been reading all of the major religions and the religious scriptures, I have no doubt in my mind and in my heart that many of these things have been corrupted. People have changed it because once upon a time, the church had power, especially in Christianity. I know this for, for a fact. In Christianity, the church had power over people. They realized that they could control people by using a book that is basically trying to dictate and tell you what's going to happen after you die, right? So because the scripture existed, they wanted to take power over other people. And if other people realize that God is outside of a religion, that you can access God by yourself without the need of the church, without the need of a pastor, that you have the abilities of spiritual powers, which is in the Bible itself, y'all, you have the ability of having spiritual power. They knew that if you knew these things, you would not need the church because you wouldn't. You wouldn't need the church. All of this is manipulation for people to have power and control over people. These are people making a book, their false God, or they want to be like God and control other people and dictate what people do in their lives. Y'all can look this up, y'all. I'm not just saying stuff to make things up. However, on the contrary, these things existed for a reason. Upon doing some research, especially since I started reading the Quran, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I started reading the Quran, right? And there were points in the Quran where I got upset. I'm not even going to lie. Reading the Quran made me mad. And I couldn't fully understand it. And it's because I realized some of this didn't seem like the word of God. Some of this seemed like they were trying to control people again. However, I'm not upset about it. And why do I say this? When I did some research, I found out in ancient Arabia, before Islam became a thing, a lot of people were practicing um, things that are very ungodly, okay? They were worshiping other gods um, in idol worship, whereas they were removing themselves from the actual power and putting all of the energy into this object that they created to be the god. And when, as they did that, they began to do things that were uh, inhumane, like sacrifices, human sacrifices, uh, also uh, lots of animal sacrifices. Um, they were treating women like they were property. Women were considered property during ancient Arabia times. Women weren't allowed to be in places of worship many times. Women weren't allowed to do a lot of things. And so because of such of the, the basically the ungodly ways and, and treatment of people and, and women, Islam had to come. Islam had to come about. Now here's the thing. God is a miraculous being. God speaks in different ways and God compromises, okay? The word of God came through in some aspects of the Quran. However, the word of man came through too. There are some traditions from ancient Arabian practices that still made it through the Quran. One of them is being women shouldn't pray or worship uh, while they're menstruating. First of all, that doesn't make any sense because why would God care about some blood coming out of the vagina if that's supposedly what God intended us to do? And second of all, um, it's one of the only religions that I know of that say that. And my consensus is if only one book or one scripture or one religion says it, it's probably not the word of God. It's probably the word of man and it's cultural practices that slip through the, the scriptures. Many cultural practices and cultural norms and all that stuff slip through the scriptures. And it's for many reasons. It's because God knew that when telling people these things, they're not going to fully believe the whole truth unless you add some of those things in it. People are more likely to shift to a new way of thinking if there is some form of familiarity to it. You're not going to go to a different place with completely different ideals, completely different customs, and think that they're somehow going to shift. It's going to be very hard and it's going to take some time, a long time. I think this is even happening in India. And there's multiple reasons why it's probably not happening, but even in India right now, there's all these missionaries trying to 
claim that the the hindu deities or pan panantha i don't remember the term is somehow uh you know false gods fallen angels and all this blasphemy and preposterousness and so they're trying to shift them out of their uh their sanatana dharma way of doing things it's not working very well hinduism is still one of the main religions in that country and it doesn't it actually seems to be growing so and that's because the christian bible comes from a completely different place there's a completely different concept in looking of god also the bible is so simple in comparison to hindu scriptures it's so simple and it's missing a lot more information than hindu scriptures you're not going to get that's almost like i'm not going to lie to y'all you from what I've read from the Hindu scriptures, there's nothing in the Bible, in the Quran that's not already in there. And then in their scriptures, there's even more. So it's almost like if I were to trans, if I knew about the scriptures of Hinduism and Sanatana Dharma, and I go down to the Bible, that's almost like a downgrade. It's almost like a downgrade because it's not as much information and it's not, it doesn't explain God in the same complexity, okay? This is why I said, don't make a Bible a book your false God. I don't believe that you'll ever be able to find the full truth of who God or what God is if you only read one religious scripture. The problem is many people who are, my bad y'all squirrels, <laughs> many people who are a part of a, a religion or they follow certain scriptures or read certain scriptures, they think somehow it's a sin or they'll deviate or they just flat out don't want to, they're lazy to read other scriptures and so they never get to learn the other scriptures and they never get to realize how their mindset of God is very limited. It's extremely limited and it's very biased. If you read these scriptures, you'll realize that God is speaking to all these people in the regions of the world. How much ego do you have to have to believe that somehow God will only speak to one region of the world and tell the truth to one region of the world in one book? That is a lot of ego. And you know what? I am very, and, and I believe very strongly that God did this on purpose, okay? God made different stories or told different stories, a different version of stories to different people and places and, and things. And because God knew that at one point in time that we will all have access to all of this. In the past, we didn't have access to all of it. And this is why so many different scriptures existed. God wants you to know who God is. But God is not going to be able to do that with one book in one region of the world in a place where not everyone has access. And so at this times or during these times, God gave different versions and different truths to different people to understand who God is in the complexity of God, but our human egos like to skew God and we like to limit God and we like to think God is somehow what we want God to be and not what God has said God is. And we try to play God ourselves. We try to put ourselves in a position of God when God is literally speaking to all these people and God has literally created all of these books. God is the creator after all. And if God is the creator, why would God not create different versions of themselves? Why would God not create or speak to different people about different versions of, the, of a story about who God is? Why would God not create different fables and stories in different ways of presenting the scriptures and the truth in different ways if God is the creator? Creativity is what God is in, in love and all that stuff. God loves all God's people, all the people. God is a part of all of us. God is not going to sit there and just say one thing to one people. We're at a point now with that we have access to the internet and access to a lot of different things and, and people all over the world that we can now share stories of God. But instead, our human egos don't want to accept and appreciate the different stories of God. And we somehow want to put ourselves in a godly position and think this is what I learned and the, as what God is. So this is what God is. We're not opening our heart and our mind to all the ways that God has presented their creative way of expressing themselves. Instead, we want to be God. We're making ourselves a false God. False God. We're making a book a false God. We're making a religion our false God instead of just accepting who God is. Instead of just accepting that God gave different stories for a different reason. We're not trying to think like God because we never made a true relationship with God. When you make a true relationship with God, you get to really know who God is and how complex and how diverse God really is. God is so complex and so diverse. They're complex in ways that sometimes we, uh, with our human thinking, cannot fathom. And through our human thinking, we follow this false God in our mind. Y'all, I kid you not. I can sense and feel 
low vibrational entities um because of my pendulum divination i ain't gonna lie y'all but there was a blessing in me doing pendulum divination even though i don't do it anymore and it was that i was able to access or feel the different uh vibrations and some of them were demonic there were so many times when i spoke to christians devout christians who somehow knew the truth about who god was and how the truth was only in the bible they would sit there and they would preach to me about who god is and god's word and i can feel the demons around them i can feel the demons with, like it's like they're right around them because demons play on lies they play on ego they love they like that shit. they love it they live in it okay so when you when you limit yourself into these lies okay that somehow the book one book is the only truth and you hate you essentially hate other religious scriptures and other things god is saying demons are playing around they love that shit. they love that energy they're whispering your ears you're right there is the only one god this is the only god god god, god. this all is a lie y'all it's a lie you got to disconnect from these false gods that you're making anytime you cling to a false god it leaves rooms for demons to play games and lie to you they'll continuously lie to you demons like to lie to people they like to confuse people they like to perpetuate lies and confusion they want to play on your fears if you're afraid that if you read other scriptures that god is going to be unhappy with you demons love that shit. they'll play on that don't read this because god is going to be mad <laughs> that's literally what they do and the irony is people are so sure that they're following God, not realizing they're succumbing to fear. They're succumbing to Satan, which is the epitome of fear, uh, the personification of fear. God is not in one religion, y'all. Do not make a religion or a Bible your false God. Open your heart and mind to who God is. When you really want to develop a relationship with God, God will lead you to the truth. Y'all, let me tell you from my personal experience, once upon a time, a long time ago, <laughs> I had prayed to God, said, God, if you really exist, show me the truth. Little did I know, and this is, by, mind y'all, I was not even, I was not any religion, nothing, 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 nothing. I think the most that I had was red. No, I don't even think I got to that point. I just asked God, if you really exist, show me the truth. I just kept praying that shit because I was down and struggling. Y'all, it led me to finding the Dhammapada and the Bhavagad Gita. I only read the Dhammapada because the Bhavagad Gita was beyond my comprehension. So was the Dhammapada, but it was written in a more simplistic way and in, in, in a poetry uh, form. And I was into poetry at that time. So I read the Dhammapada. And the irony is that in Buddhism, they don't believe in God, but they do believe in the power of the self, which is still very important. And so uh, I believe all of this, like I said, I believe all the scriptures have some grand importance. I read it and I learned a lot from there. And from there, I read more and more. And then when I got about four years ago, I called on to the spirit guides of high truth, compassion, love and light to guide me in my life. And they came and they guided me in my life. And the first person that introduced themselves to me was Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva came down. Papa, Lord Shiva came to me and told me who he was. And then I learned that his consort, who also goes by Isis, the deity Isis, his consort was also the guider, guider, guide, Lord, the, the guider of my spirit. I learned about them. I learned about other things. I learned who God was. Then I said to, then recently as I moved to Texas, my spirit guides kept leading me or my intuition, whatever you want to call it, kept leading to me to uh, churches and stuff in religious places. And I said, I asked, why do I y'all keep on leading me to these places? and lord shiva literally said to me i want you to see me in other religions y'all here's the thing whenever my spirit god or god the god say something to me or god says something to me anytime they say something to me they say something but then there's i, I don't know how to explain it but it's like they hit you with information that is like profound you might not necessarily hear you might not know it it's almost like a, a download it's just a download that's the best way you could put it and so they hit you with a download and it opens your mind to exactly what they mean by what they say or even if you don't understand it then they will lead you to figuring out what it means and so when that happened to me i began to become more interested in reading and, and reading the bible understanding who god was in the other perspectives of different religions and i started to realize oh shit, god is in all of it god is literally in all of it God is in the religion and outside of religion. God is without the need of anything physical. Your most powerful connection to God, and I said this in the last video, that your most powerful connection to God is your thought alone. 
your thought alone. All you have to do is ask God. That's what I did, y'all. I didn't go to no book. I didn't go to no religion. I didn't go to no religious place of worship. I didn't go to no nothing. I went to nothing. All I went is directly to God. And that's the true God. Following this idea that God is only in the Bible, God is only in the Quran, God is only in this and that and other. That's a false God, y'all. It's a false God. You're making a book the God. A book, a physical thing. This is idol worship. They want to talk about idol worship, don't realize, and they're doing idol worship themselves. It's idol worship. You're idolizing the Bible. You're idolizing the church. And you're making it a false God. You're making it a false God. That is idol worship. Idol worship is not just the little stones and beings and saying this is God. That's just for concentration and connection and other stuff. But the God is always right here. God is always right here. God is always right here. You don't need any of those things. But everybody wants to idol worship the Bible. Everybody wants to idol worship the Quran. Don't make these things your false God. You don't need these things. These are just tools. Tools that might help you get closer to God, but they're not God itself. Your greatest connection to God is through thought alone. Your greatest connection to God is through thought alone. Through prayer and meditation is your greatest connection to God. You don't need a book. God existed before all of these things. All of these things are man-made. Religion is man-made. These books are man-made. All this is man-made. Your best connection to God is through God. And man or human beings, mostly men, wrote these books. They wrote these things. You got to understand that human beings aren't perfect. Their writing is not perfect. The ego sometimes slip in because we're human beings and that's what happens. Sometimes the ego slips in and it is what it is. It's not until we no longer need to be a human being that we no longer have the ego slipping in. <laughs> that's basically how it works. So do not make these things your false God, y'all. You can connect to God no matter your religion. And I say this to religious people who want to sit around, especially Christians, because they irk my soul when they do this. They come to the the, the videos of with Hinduism, and they want to say, oh, these are fallen angels, these are evil, y'all. First of all, this is extremely disrespectful, because you don't see them going to your stuff, saying Jesus is a false god, and he's a fallen angel, and he's a demon. So not only is it extremely disrespectful, you're dead wrong. You're dead wrong, and demons are whispering in your ear to tell you these lies. I'm telling you right now, the demons have a grasp on you. If you're thinking this thing, you're trying to be God and you're not. You're trying to have control when you can't. There's so much corruption that has happened with religion. And it's because people make religion their false God. Stop making these things your false God and connect to the true God, the true God. And God will show you and tell you who you are. And you will be amazed. You in ways that you... I have finally realized and found who God is. And it took years, y'all. It didn't happen overnight. It took years for me to understand who God was. And it's because God led me to understanding that. God led me to understand. God in the name of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva literally has said to me, and so has uh, Ma, Isis. I go by many names. I go by many names. Even in the Hindu scriptures or the Hinduism, they say Lord Shiva has 108 names. But he has even more names than that even more names than that and more incarnations more descendants and all of those things so you cannot limit god by your name you cannot limit god by a book you cannot limit god by religion all of that is making something your false god and the even more uh, the even biggest irony of all of this even the god in the bible came from a polytheistic religion Y'all, <laughs> most of y'all probably have no fucking idea about this. Yahweh is one of the name, or Jehovah, is one of the names of the deities. Oh, hey, Squirrely. <laughs> Within the, the uh, Can Canaan, Canaan or Babylon, I don't remember, the Canaan religious uh, followings. One of their gods was Baal, which is funny because it's in the Bible, and some other stuff. And Yahweh or Jehovah was one of them. Somewhere along the way, I think the Jewish people took out Yahweh and Jehovah and said, you know what? This is the most powerful God of all the gods in this polytheistic, polytheistic religion. So this is the God that I'm going to worship and stuff. Y'all know the history of what y'all talk about. So why are you sitting there talking about false gods and false this, that, and the other? Your whole own religion is doing the same shit. Right now, Squirrely is sitting here waiting for me to give him food, but I ain't even got no food or her. Hey, Squirrely, look. Y'all, look at the squirrel. Can y'all see? I can't even see if you can see it. Eh, Squirrely. 
anyway i'm about to end this video that's the video y'all i hope you understand stop making god other things your false god make a true connection to god today ask god god if you exist or god who are you show me who you are let go of religion and all these other limited versions of god in your head and just ask god who you are and let god show themselves to you okay that's my message y'all oh yeah if you want to support this channel check out the description like comment subscribe do all of them things and i'll see you guys for another video peace